Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and in this episode we begin by attempting to get into a sun synchronous orbit but I sort of forgot that that's actually a little bit more difficult than I imagined and the main reason is because of the eccentricity requirement. So we have here the Rad Explorer which means that it's got an RD engine and the Explorer at the top uh, but I mean, periapsis above 300 kilometers is fine. We saw that a lot in the previous episode. And inclination 95 to 99, that's fine too. We can manage that with the delta V that we have, and we did a polar orbit satellite in the previous episode as well. Eccentricity between 0.02 and 0.04, which is nearly circular but not quite, that we did not do. And that is because, well, it's a little bit hard to manage our eccentricity. But we'll give it a go, and I'm going to add eccentricity down here, obviously. Normally I don't need to bother with that, but this time we do. So down there it goes. All right, so on that note, SAS on, thrall is up, ignition. We have a good engine, and launch. All right, so going north and a little bit retrograde. Unfortunately, it is a much shorter stage than the Vanguard stage, so we do have to be a little bit aggressive with it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, I think it's a high thrust weight ratio at this point. Mm. It's, it's iffy. Verniers are nice, so you don't have to actually tilt the high thrust weight ratio nozzle. Okay, 200 kilometers. That's fairly typical for what we do there. RCS on. And we'll want surface 15 is typically what we do. Okay, separation. Oh, sorry, zero. I... <laughs> uh, I did that with the polar orbit satellite as well. Forgot to change the heading. Okay, make sure the fuel is settled and... AJ-10 is a go. So the requirement was 95 to 99 degrees. Okay, that's 95. Okay, shut down for now. Okay, here we go again. You know, the Araby. The XASR, really. I mean, the first version of the XASR is the WAC Corporal, and then the second version is the XASR. I just always call them Arabies anyway. Okay. Well, this time the AJ-10 wasn't uh, volatile. Oh, I can't shut it down. Right, because I don't have the... Well, so this is academic, isn't it? I should have tossed it up higher. Ah, shucks. Well, proof of concept. <laughs> um, yeah, obviously that was not what we needed to do. I need that hydrazine. Or I need... Or I could use thrusters for the last bit. Hmm. We seem to be a thousand meters per second too much here. Maybe we can use that as a basis. If I could put something with RCS at the top, maybe this cone, and that diminishes our total delta V by about a thousand, that should do the trick. Okay, so what I've done is added a little conic stage with just RCS thrusters, which diminishes our delta V by about a thousand meters per second. But of course, that's not including what delta V this HTP actually represents. Now, it's not entirely clear how controllable this is going to be. I've been able to use H and N to sort of control the lateral thrusters. It's possible that key presses, W, A, C, and D, and all, could still control the RCS, even though we don't have a guidance unit. I tried putting the guidance unit on, uh, an upper stage avionics thing, 
and that uh, that cut our delta V down by too much, so we couldn't manage that. We'll need a larger rocket if we wanted to do that, or we need to develop some lighter avionics. So let's take a look at the tech tree and see where we get those cores that would allow that. So what we're looking for is basically the Probodobodyne Octo, right? I mean, Ranger cores or something like that. Looks like it's right here, right? Early controllable core, 0.2 tons, bulkier than it used to be. But yeah, this is basically it. Probe core avionics. So let's queue that up. We now have a reason. Uh, I'll hold off on spending any more for now before I, you know, splurge. It seems prudent for us to buy some more of these upgrade points, though, hmm, hold on a sec. We do have to watch out for this R&D upgrade. We need 500,000 for that. But we could probably get that. How much is the lunar fly? Oh, these are good. If we could do these, that'll pay for the R&D building. And I think we can do those without without any technology that costs more than 25. So let's spend some points, some funds to get points, and especially for research. OK. And it still takes a while. I don't need 1958 orbital rocketry just yet I think I think the basic avionics is more important that's rough because we're at 1959 already so we're falling behind here but then again we haven't really been using some of the more advanced parts like the stuff the engines for Atlas or R7 or anything like that we are still we're still tiny we're cute we're still chibi so okay Radnav, though. Hopefully that'll be a simpler sort of situation. It just wants above 300 kilometers. And actually, we're finishing up the launch pad upgrade, so now we can do 150 ton uh, launchers. We haven't really broken 20 tons very much. The, the Rad series does get to 23 tons, but not a huge leap just yet. I haven't pushed the 60 ton boundary. I'm really slow. <laughs> I'm taking this really slowly. Okay, rolling out Radnav. We'll get satellite era science there. Hmm. I'm gonna buy a couple more upgrade points here and there. I'll keep to 400,000. 16 science per year. Okay, well, we'll just go with a nighttime launch. Throttle up. SAS on. Good thing the Explorer Core has plenty of electric charge for that. And again, reviewing our requirements. 45 degrees, 300 kilometers, and 100 units of nav sat payload. It's checkmarked, so it's okay with what we've got. All right, ignition. And launch. I'm just gonna go 45 degrees. That should get us to about 50 degree inclination, 51. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know, I like the two vanguards better for sheer controllability. Whoa, 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 you can see, ah. Okay. Okay, now check fuel settled and ignition. And we're a go. Inclination above 45 is good. I think part of the wobbliness was the extra long section here with this additional bit. Uh, I didn't really leave myself too much spare. Spare apple apsis, I guess you could call it. Okay, we are above 300 kilometers. Separation. And ignition. Let's 
So here we go with a NAVSAT payload. Okay, make sure it goes above 300. Oh, come on. Come on, get above 300. Get above three. Oh. Okay, that's really pro grade. Come on. Oh, right. Hmm. No, it's too close. I must find a way. We've got a little bit of HTP. That's worse. All right, all right, I give up. Darn it, so close. Okay, back to Space Center. So even though it uh, costs a bit more, I think I'm going to go with the Vanguard version of this. And that's because I think, I mean, our obvious problem was that I didn't initially get us above 300 kilometers well enough. And it's just more controllable with the Vanguard engine than with anything else. So, this is what I'm going to do. Even though it costs more, takes a lot more to roll out. Wow, 11,000 to roll out. Oh, man. It's like, I mean, forget, just, just don't give me this number. Forget this number. Just put that number down here. So, uh, switch the numbers. I don't care. Whatever. Put that number down here because that's the important number. This one doesn't matter at all. This is irrelevant. That's the number we need to look at. I don't I don't understand. I mean, who cares about the 2500 when it's going to cost 11,000? All right, folks. I have been overspending, as you can probably see. And the main reason I got started because of the Atlas tank. So, this Atlas E/F fuel tank is a very good fuel tank. It's uh, this one here. And you notice it costs 1,303. It's a big fuel tank, and also its unlock cost was pretty cheap. It was like in the thousands, not ten thousands. I also got this Juno One tank because it was cheap too. Uh, the downside to both of these tanks is that they don't fit with the tooling that I already have. But I mean, they don't require tooling themselves, right? I mean, it's just a matter of what I put on top of them. Uh, they themselves don't require any tooling. And in that respect, that's a pretty good deal when you think about it. I mean, any of these tanks, right? I mean, this uh, purchase cost 20, unlock cost 9, no tooling necessary. So, I mean, that's a pretty good deal when you think about it. The stock tanks and all. And uh, this one was the same way. So, I unlocked it. And, of course, the Atlas tank, like I said, is a good tank because its dry mass is one point. It's a balloon tank. Its dry mass is 1.5 tons, its wet mass is 105 tons. So that's a great ratio. That led me to unlock, oh actually here, the the tank 3s. And those were more expensive. This one's 25,000, this is 45,000. And those were, you know, I, I, I'm, sh oh, well, uh, I just wanted to compare it with the Atlas tank. So let's just uh, put one off to the side here. Okay, so something like that. And let's say we fill up with kerosene. It's better actually, this balloon tank. Uh, you can see its ratio is well, about the same actually. But uh, boy, did the cost go up. And uh, it, it's actually not as good. Uh, wait, uh, no, it is as good after tooling. It's, it's a good deal. Uh, but you have to put 64,000 up front. So that's a problem. And uh, the nice thing about the Atlas tank is I didn't have to do that. But I unlocked those just for the heck of it. And then I unlocked the LR-105, which is the center engine to this. That costs uh, 90000 to unlock. But after I unlocked that, I noticed that the LR-89, the booster engines, were free to unlock. Which, well, if they had told me that earlier, that would have been a good thing to tell me. Uh, because the LR-89s have basically the same ISPs as the Vanguard engine, which we've, we have been using, but uh, the cost is nice. Uh, Mass-wise, it's probably worth it if you need the thrust, so it's a good deal because of all that. And uh, LR-79, not so much. It doesn't have as much thrust. The ISP is about the same, and uh, it's heavier. So even though right now its unlock cost is only 10,000, I swear it was more before. Uh, but yeah, and of course the LR89 is 300 in base cost, uh, this cost here. 
whereas the Vanguard is 400. So there's that going for it. So that's this engine over here. And of course, there are upgrade options eventually. So that's something we can look forward to, whereas the Vanguard, there's no future for it, really. So we've got those now. <laughs> and while I was at it, I decided I might as well get the skirt too, the Atlas fairing decoupler. That was 300 to unlock, and it's 15 altogether. So basically, we've got an Atlas rocket here, which means it can carry a, you know, a Mercury capsule kind of payload. At the top here, we have one of the controllers, the early guidance unit. I've had to do something sneaky though. You see, I mean, it's obviously too big for this. So I shifted the fairing up and then clipped it in. I don't know if that's going to be legal or not, or if it's going to work or not, but it seemed like the right thing to do. Uh, I don't know. I mean, otherwise we're going to have to have a pile of uh, guidance units probably a bunch of these because it'll take three of these in order to control this so that's interesting and uh, yeah uh, now the trouble with the atlas rocket and we now have all components of the atlas rocket except for the little verniers uh, oddly enough even though the lr89 was free to unlock and i'm not entirely sure it was supposed to be but two there were two versions of the lr89 and they were both free to unlock so at least there's consistency there, unlike with the RD-107 and the SXT version being one price and the, this other one from Real Engines being a different price. That's a different story. Also, I wonder about the ISPs here for the Verniers. I guess that's for the Verniers. Hmm. Anyway, so we don't have the Verniers on here, but we've got the rest of an Atlas rocket. And so we could do Atlas-y things, but the Delta V, we can't really tell how much Delta V we have because of the weird way the boosters separate. So planning-wise, it's a little bit of a trick. And we don't really need this right now, though we have the capacity for it. We've got 150 ton capacity for the launch pad now. So interesting times. Another variation on this, now that we have the LR-89, is a rocket that I have dubbed Larry. Now, Larry does use our tooled parts. It's basically taking the Vanguard engines off, putting the LRA9 on, putting the same diameter tanks on the sides, and then putting two AJ-10s here, and then two of those uh, smaller tanks, right? So that is a possibility. As you can see, this is currently carrying the NAVSAT payload that we're supposed to be launching on something else but it doesn't require the use of the Araby. Does this actually have enough Delta V to deliver it to a proper orbit? That's a different question. That's interesting. We have a procedural avionics core here. It's barely better than uh, able avionics core in this situation. But yeah, so Larry is, Larry is a possibility. Not too sure we want to go here, but it's a little bit more expensive than our other option. All right, so that is a thing, but we do have two rockets in queue already, and we'll see if we can do the job with one of them. Okay, well, I've opted to focus on the nav unit. So there's the nav satellite payload once again, and just a reminder, what we've got to do is uh, get to 300 kilometers, that, that's been our bane, and 45 degrees. It should be easy, right? All we have to do is aim high initially, but I keep missing that. Uh, this is the Vanguard version, so we'll at least have a little bit more control. Uh, but will the engines ignite? Ignition. Well, they seem to be good. And launch. All right, let's let it take us up a little bit higher than usual this time, hopefully. All right, RCS on, separation. And ignition. Ah, uh, what happened? Failed to ignite, and it means it this time. 
Well, uh, that's the end of that whole business. Yeah, okay, well, that's done for. Oh, maybe we can try for, like, a height thing, I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, separation, and ignition. Well, we'll see how high we get. Nope, nowhere interesting. Alright, well, I don't think it's over any interesting biomes either. Just water right now. So, we will abandon it. I need to hold down that key so that I can go back to space and otherwise we are actually accelerating. Okay, well, I thought that mission was going pretty well before test flight killed that AJ-10, so I've queued another one of those up, but who knows. Um, yeah, we'll see. But the next one up is presumably an attempt to do that sun synchronous satellite. I think I have the stage which is mostly HTP to deal with the excess delta V. We'll see. Though my experience is that we can't really steer with WAS and D with the probes with the AeroB telemetry unit. So probably it's just not going to work out. I've got a bad feeling about this. Well, yeah, there's a lot of HTP there, but could we put it to any use or not? Well, let's find out. Ignition. And launch. I long for proper probe cores. Soon. Okay. Right. Honor CS on. And get this stuff ready. All right, let's get the party started. Ignition. Okay, and it's out. Okay, shut down. Well, the AJ-10 worked this time, thankfully. And we can just point around there-ish. And separation. Oh, and ignition before things go crazy. God, those AJ-10s and their explosions. Doesn't seem to have knocked this off though. Uh, orbit. Okay, alright. Alright, you don't have to do that anymore. It's okay, stop. Okay, I'm I'm holding down N while it checks for the orbit. Our Apoas is still sort of going up. Highly anxious right now, but it looks like even though there's some fuel leaking out, uh, oh, oh, and if I hover over the MechJeb windows, uh, it doesn't read my pressing N anymore. Um, but yeah, it looks like our eccentricity is going to hold between 0.02 and 0.04 like this. It's only creeping up a little bit. Okay, one, zero, okay, it fulfilled. Uh, now, this is not really a sun-synchronous orbit, technically. Um, they're teaching you wrong things, but uh, yeah, I'll take it, it's fine. Um, we'll let that run out. I wanted to see whether we could use all the RCS ports up here or whether that's not a thing. So... Okay, a stop, stop. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be a thing. It's only forward and back, apparently. Except for that one. I don't know why that one's still going, but... I think that's... Oh, that, that was MechJeb doing it. Oh, that was probably MechJeb doing the leak, too. MechJeb's responsible for so many weird things. MechJeb could probably control this. Or not, but uh, I don't think. Let's see, can it go to a high pitch? No. Can it control? Well, there's not enough thrusters to control roll anyway. Okay, 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 okay. I wanna, I wanna go back. It's good enough. We've got this satellite with uh, electric charge and HTP and everything. 
and hold on a sec. Space Center. I seem to recall a contract, but I don't think I don't think this can do it with just its HTP. Well, that's sort of the harder of the two contracts. Hopefully, we'll get the easier of the two done. Let's pay to rush build that a little bit more. Oh, fine, a little bit more. And what was it? Sounding rocket altitude. It, uh, well, I have to launch a new vessel before taking the contract, though. We should be able to do this, but I need to wait until we've got a rocket ready, otherwise the 90 days will run out. So, we'll hold off on that. What's the penalty for this navigational satellite one? We gotta lose 18,000. Okay, well... If that's what happens, that's what happens. But uh, it's really down to test flight, I think, because the rocket has the Delta V and the capability. It's possible I'll derp, but... 12 days to roll it out. I swear it gets longer and longer. We're getting the tracking station upgrade. Early flight control is still gonna take a while. We're so not going to get to launch a person in any good time. I mean, where the heck is that in the tech tree anyway? How far are we from pods? I mean, human rated descent is there. Interplanetary probes, improved avionics, mature avionics, large scale avionics. Okay. Interplanetary communications, improved communications, power generation, RTGs, solids. At least there's one track I don't have to deal with. Basic capsules, but we'll need to unlock the R&D building first. And it also needs human rated EDL, that makes sense. It also needs crew survivability, which is where exactly? Oh, there, there. Crew survivability which has nothing in it. Hmm. Curious. But okay. And early human spaceflight materials science. Well, that it actually allows us to unlock. But that's not directly related to basic capsules. So I want capsules. I've got Atlas. Might as well have capsules, right? Hmm. We're gonna get some additional sciences, right? Or we've already gotten these sciences, so that has possibilities. But even before we get human rate EDL, we need this EDL. Let's start unlocking that. That makes sense. Okay, we have spent some science. Let's speed up the science. We need to speed up a lot of things, but... Okay, so here we go again. 45 degrees, 300 kilometers. May our engines not quit on us. Throttle up. SAS is on. Ignition. And launch. Let me roll a little bit so that I can more easily turn. Okay. Oh, we got loss of performance. And I can't really check right now because I'm trying to control it and keep it from flipping. Uh, yeah, it's specific impulse. Shoot. I probably turned a little bit too fast given that. Well, normally this stage gets us to 200 kilometers. It's not quite gonna get uh, quite gonna get there, but it's not hopeless. All right, RCS on. Separation. And let's get this all attituded up. Probably twenty-five pitch this time. And we need to start now. Ignition. Okay, we'll still have a chance. Won't be the most brilliant chance, but... 
I don't know, the Del V is gonna be pretty close. Okay, separation and ignition. Whoa, my god. It just gets worse and worse, that whole AJ-10 explosion thing. That, that is what that was, right? Yeah, 43,000 Kelvin. 43,000 Kelvin. That bears repeating a few times. Eh, I should have pointed a little bit further eastward. Mm. Okay, well... Let's see what the HTP can do for us, but... No, it's going to fall short. Well, test flight. I mean... <sighs> test flight hates the Vanguard engines, if you haven't noticed already. So, I think we're going to fail this contract. Can't have everything. Back to Space Center. Well, the contract will be up in 19 days and I can't build another rocket in that time. Can't even rush it. I don't think you can rush past 50%. So, we're going to have to do other things. Like, wait. <laughs> uh, we will see. Lunar flyby, lunar impactor, lunar orbiter are tempting. But difficult, especially since they only give us a year to do it. You'd think they'd be fine if we did it at some point, but no, it has to be very specific. So, we will see. On that note, uh, with one success and one failure, as far as the contracts are concerned, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.